Grambling State University. It is there you'll find Coach Eddie Robinson, the winningest coach in the history of football. You'll also find at Grambling a marching band that is recognized not only nationally, but internationally as well. But there is a lot more to Grambling State University than football and music. I'm Robin Hinton. Today we'll be taking a look at a part of Grambling that we don't often hear about, the academics. That as we conclude our salute to Louisiana's black colleges today on Folks. everyone and welcome to another edition of Folks. So far this month we have taken a look at three of the four predominantly black colleges here in Louisiana. Today we end our look at Louisiana's black colleges with a report on Grambling State University, a powerhouse not only on the gridiron but in the classroom as well. Now here's Sonia Massingale with a brief look at Grambling's history. Rob, Grambling State University has a glorious past. It began as a dream the dream of Dr. Charles Adams, Grambling's founder and first president. Dr. Adams began his dream in this house, located two blocks from Grambling's campus. In 1901, his dream became a reality. That is when the university opened its doors. Most of the curriculum then centered around agriculture, technical training, and school basics for poor blacks in Lincoln Parish. Today, the Adams home serves as a reminder of a glorious past it was dedicated to the university by Dr. Adams' descendants and serves as a hall of fame for the institution. We, the heirs of Charles Philip Adams and Martha Norman Adams, are pleased and happy to, do, to donate the family's home place to Grambling State University Foundation, Incorporated. Dr. Adams presided over Grambling for 35 years. He was succeeded by Dr. Ralph Waldo Emerson Jones, who served as leader of the university for four decades. Today, Dr. Joseph Johnson is at the helm, carrying on the philosophy of his two predecessors, Grambling, a place where everybody is somebody. As Sonia mentioned, it is Dr. Joseph Johnson who presides over the university today. Recently, he and I talked about why Grambling is an exciting place for learning. When you look at uh, the history of Grambling and uh, some of the things that we've been able to do over the 85 years that we've been in existence, certainly make it very attractive. I know many occasions that people look upon Grambling, uh, the, the great athletic program and uh, the great band, but we always use these as focal points in order to get the name of the institution out. Uh, and we've been able to do that very successfully, and in the process, we've capitalized from the standpoint of our good and excellent academic programs. Uh, this past year, Grambling State University received an award from the American Association of State Colleges and Universities for excellence in teacher education, which uh, meant that uh, we had one of the top education programs in the country. So I think it's been a combination of how we've been able to use those things that we've had to keep the name of the institution out there. There are approximately 5,000 students on Grambling's campus. Students, according to Dr. Johnson, dedicated to knowledge. As any good institution, we try to identify the best possible students that, that we can. But 
We also have a mission at Gramlin State University, and that mission is to make sure that there are opportunities for students uh, from throughout the country uh, who would more or less maybe not have an opportunity. And I feel very strongly about that because as I stand here today talking with you, uh, growing up in the ghettos of New Orleans, had not it been for Gramlin State University and the group of dedicated people who were there, I would not be where I am today. So I think that uh, uh, although we, we make sure that we try to, to look for real good students, but we want to make sure that opportunity will always exist for those students who may not have had an opportunity somewhere else. Grambling is a state-supported school. A lot of state monies are involved. But with the state's fiscal woes and the word cutback buzzing from the legislature, possibly to the tune of 22 percent, some hard times could lie ahead for Grambling. Any cutback will have uh, certainly a significant bearing on the university. Uh, but if you're talking 22 percent uh, cutback, uh, not only in Grambling but any institution, that's a tremendous amount of, of money to make up, which would be close to four million dollars. Uh, as far as we're concerned, so uh, that would have a significant impact upon us. If you're talking 4 to, to 10 percent, I think that uh, uh, it's going to be difficult, but I think that we may be able to work, uh, uh, work with that particular range because we understand at Gramlin that the state is in a very difficult posture. However, we also understand that Gramlin has not had the benefit of many other institutions in the state. So any cutback that you might have on a Gramlin and a Southern, you can rest assured that it's going to have a tremendous impact. But uh, we're going to do what we have to do to make sure that the name of the school and we can man maintain excellence and quality in our programs. Not only are there proposed cutbacks from the state level, but federal cuts and financial assistance for students could impact student enrollment. Well, we've done uh, some tremendous uh, research on it. Uh, as it stands right now with the graham Rudman Act, uh, we know that uh, there will be about 182 students uh, impacted. But the other part of the impact uh, would be any increase in tuition, uh, as well as, uh, well, the cutbacks from the financial aid standpoint, whether or not the institution is capable of making up that difference. Uh, what we've been able to do at Gramlin, and this has been a, a very, very integral part of my whole planning process, is to make sure that we have a real good work-study program with X number of dollars in there for students who really want to go to school and want to, and want to work. So we say at Gramlin, if you want to go to school and if you don't mind working, we can provide the opportunity for you. So uh, while it's going to be very difficult, we think that we'll be able to meet the needs of our students. But despite all the doom and gloom, Dr. Johnson remains optimistic about Grambling's future. Well, I see the future being very, very bright at Graham State University uh, uh, within the last couple of years. And, and I would say due to the consent decree, uh, it has uh, provided us an opportunity to move the university much further than most people could have imagined. Uh, on about, well, March 27, as you know, we uh, uh, have our first doctoral program. We've instituted a nursing school, a master's in criminal justice, and a master's in social work. And, uh, and uh, we think that these are core programs, the uh, MBA program is the other one. Uh, these are the core programs that we feel uh, that will move the university forward. Uh, uh, we, we are constantly having an enrollment increase. Uh, we've had the highest enrollment in the history of the institution last year, almost 5,000 students. When I became president in, in 1977, it was 3,100 and dropping. Now we're right at 5,000, and the demand for applications to get in far exceeding our imagination. The students, faculty, staff, and alumni are all very proud of their alma mater. We all know that Grambling is a powerhouse on the football field, and as Sonia will tell us later on, the marching band is very outstanding. But as I said at the top of the program, Grambling is a lot more than football and music. You can find a lot going on in the classrooms. University officials will tell you that Grambling is an institution dedicated to knowledge. The university has come a long way. There has been much expansion since the early days. Student enrollment has grown to nearly 5,000, the highest ever. And 55 buildings make up the campus. At one time, Grambling was known as a teacher education school. But over the years, the university's programs have expanded to meet the career challenges of today's marketplace. For example, the School of Business. Coursework includes aerospace, economics, business, and office administration. Again, classes designed to train students to meet the challenges of today. Uh, we have attempted to identify and to bring on people that we feel 
could do the kind of job that we think is necessary to provide the kind of quality education that we want to give here at the institution. Uh, traditionally, Gramlin was a teacher education school. Uh, the reason for that was because there were very few opportunities in the field of business. But now we're finding that uh, uh, most of the young people coming along now are interested in the business profession. The School of Business offers programs in accounting, management, marketing, economics, office administration, and computer information systems. We also offer a degree in uh, computer information systems at the master's level, together with a degree in general administration. Again, we have the faculty and facilities to provide the student interested in a bachelor's or master's degree in business here at Grambling an excellent faculty, excellent equipment, excellent services to make their educational experience a rewarding, exciting, and fulfilling one. As you have just heard, the School of Business places a lot of emphasis on the computer. We will have an emphasis in computer information systems, which means that a student can come to Gramlin and get a Master's of Business Administration Computer Information System, which is going to make him or her more marketable to the companies out there. We have a computer science department that has been chosen by the Board of Regents as one of the excellent departments uh, in, the, in the state. Over the years, the biology and chemistry departments at Grambling have been instrumental in preparing students for medical school. Let's now take a closer look at some of the other programs in Grambling School of Science and Technology. They include programs in community and general dietetics, rehabilitation counseling, and hotel and restaurant management. Each program is designed to make Grambling students attractive to a highly competitive marketplace. Our objective here is to design and implement programs that will provide excellent job opportunities for our students. And at the same time, we try to implement programs for which there is a job market. There are also two-year programs in automotive technology, building construction, electronics, and drafting. Another department in the School of Science and Technology often boasted about is physics. Over the last 10 years, the physics department has graduated over 10% of the black physicists in this country with undergraduate degrees. Officials at Grambling also boast about their school of nursing. The curriculum begins with pre-nursing. I chose Grambling over several of the nursing schools because of the reputation it was developing. It's a new program, and it's an honor to be in the, on the ground floor of a new developing program such as this. We have an excellent faculty with an excellent reputation, each and every one of them, collectively and individually. Today, we have, presently have over 300 students. We have students, uh, international students, we have other race students, and we have black students, and we're very proud to have them all as a part of our nursing program at Gremlin State University. She has done something over there that uh, had not been done previously in the state. She had that program approved by the Louisiana uh, 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 Board of Nurses on the first try. And uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, Dean Smith is a very competent individual. Uh, we think that uh, we were very smart. It makes a president look good when you can identify good people like that. I feel that nursing is an excellent field for those looking for a sure job opportunity. There are many different divisions of nursing that you can go into, and I think that anyone who would go into it would enjoy helping people. And upon graduation, I hope to wear my grandma and tiger stripes with pride. As we all know, nurses spend their lives helping others. Helping others a theme that university officials say is reflected in every program on Grambling's campus. Another exciting program at Grambling State University is its criminal justice program. We feel that it's important that if, if we're going to have blacks within the criminal system or any group of people within the criminal system, then I think it's a responsibility of Grambling and other education institutions to have the kinds of programs to, to work with these people once they are incarcerated and when they come out. Grambling State University's Criminal Justice Department has been very fortunate in that we've been able to recruit faculty persons who are not only academically qualified, but bring with them the kind of practical experience so necessary when trying to relate positively with our students. This combination has enabled us to keep abreast of all the changes that are taking place in the various elements of the criminal justice system 
and also in the, helped us in the placing of our students in more than 26 states in the District of Columbia. The other thrust that we have for the Criminal Justice Department is the close contact that we have with our students. Students who have left our department, who have gone on to be practitioners in the field, are constantly in touch with us when they make their career changes or additional choices, and even more so, the information that they continually send back to the department about what is expected of young persons once they get out into the field. This is Grambling's Academic Skills Center. It is designed to help students strengthen their skills in the areas of English, reading, and math. Along with the reading, writing, and mathematics laboratories, the Multimedia Center has a computer laboratory with 50 terminals connected to a mainframe that is located in the center. The computers are used exclusively for academic purposes. Our records in the center show that students who have successfully completed developmental courses and moved to regular college courses in English and mathematics pass these courses at a rate of 10% higher than students who were not required to take developmental education courses. What that Academic Skills Center has done for this institution, and it has been so, so very important, is that it has cut down on our attrition. Because before a youngster can move on to the regular academic program, if we identify through the ACT test or the Nelson Denny test or any other test that we give over there, that those kids have deficiencies, uh, we correct those deficiencies before they go to the regular English and mathematics and other courses. And we're finding that because of the Academic Skills, skills Center, those kids, the transition has been much easier. And, and uh, I'm simply saying that uh, uh, along with the library, that Academic Skills Center are the two greatest and the most important departments that we have at this university. As we said earlier, Grambling was once best known as a teacher education college. And where the university has branched off into many other areas, the College of Education is still one of its most successful efforts. Graduates from Grambling's College of Education fare very well on the NTE, the National Teacher Examination. We in the College of Education were very honored to receive the Award of Excellence from the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. It was a national competition and the competition was keen. And it did indeed make us proud that an external organization, a professional organization, acknowledged that our teacher preparation programs at Grambling are excellent, that our programs and our products are special. Over six years ago, uh, our new dean was brought in, and under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Burnett Joyner, the faculty and staff in the College of Education revised the ed curriculum, our built-in academic support systems along with raising the standards involved uh, faculty and administration from the College of Arts and Sciences. And this resulted in the College of Ed at Grambling receiving the Showcase of Excellence Award from the American Association of Colleges and Universities. I am also very pleased and happy too that we were one of 17 institutions to receive that award. These are just some of the many exciting programs at Grambling State University, programs that make it an attractive institution of higher learning. It is a side of Grambling that many people don't hear about. It offers students in an academic environment in which university officials say they can learn, teach, and grow. We have an excellent faculty and staff and people who are really concerned about our young people. So we think that the philosophy of the school where everybody is somebody is certainly a true philosophy of this institution, and that's what we live by. We'll live by it and we'll die by it because... Over the years, many Grambling graduates have been featured on Folks. Just recently, there was 8th District Congressional Candidate Faye Williams, and let's not forget Chicago Attorney Thomas Todd. Here's what he had to say about Grambling. I think the two most significant things that happened to Grambling in the last 10 years uh, were one, the selection of Dr. Joseph Benjamin Johnson as the president of Grambling, and two, the consent decree. Uh, with Dr. Johnson's leadership uh, and using the consent decree as a beginning and as a stepping stone, Grambling has shown remarkable progress, not only in programs, but also in student census. Buildings are going up, uh, there's an MBA program now, there's a nursing school, and many, many other things. I don't want to say that we've uh, made a tremendous amount of progress because we are only catching up to what we should have had at least 25 or 30 years ago. But given the kind of progress that Grambling has made, the kind of leadership 
Dr. Johnson has shown, uh, I think the sky is the limit for Gramlin, not only uh, in the areas that uh, Gramlin is traditionally known for, the legendary Eddie Robinson in athletics, but also in computer science, in developmental education, uh, in preparing teachers, uh, in nursing, uh, and maybe in the future in law and gerontology. Gremlin is on the move, and I think that with the kind of leadership and the kind of people there, with the faculty and the kind of students and the spirit that's there, I think that the sky will be the limit. Yes, the philosophy of the university appears to be true. Grambling State University, a place where everybody is somebody. The Grambling State University Marching Band is one of the university's most outstanding attractions. Not only is this a noted organization in this country, but they have a reputation known throughout the world. A few years back, folks had a chance to see the band in action. We'd like to show you this segment now so that you can see why the Grambling Marching Tigers are recognized and known worldwide. Well, probably the style, the tempos at which we march, the tight dance steps that we try to, to uh, execute, and, well, the moving type show that we attempt to do. Grambling State University Marching Band. Well, that's our program for this week. Thanks for watching. Next week, a look at a group of young people in Baton Rouge who are trying to save education through voter registration. Be sure to join us then. Until that time, make it a good week. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Folks is celebrating its fifth year on LPB. And to celebrate the occasion, we have had designed a five-year commemorative poster. Now, if you are interested in having one, write us and let us know. Send your inquiry to folks in care of Louisiana Public Broadcasting, 7860 and Selmo Lane, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70810. We'll be sure to get one off to you right away.